Well, we are living in Brooklyn. Uh, well, I was living in Brooklyn alone, bachelor, hipster, eating oysters, drinking beer, um, working as a building computer systems, really large systems, the kind of systems that send you junk mail, um, as well as large uh, financial and insurance companies. Really interesting stuff. Um, what I did really well there was make those systems work really fast and simply. Um, but most of the time I was just sitting in a cubicle, becoming really unhealthy. Um, after I got married uh, to Kate, previous to that I had bought a cabin up here. And after I got married, you know, we didn't go out as much anymore. Not as much beer and oysters and all of that. So we were just in a very expensive apartment um, and not getting out much. And we really enjoyed being up here at the cabin. So we made a decision to just get out of the city and move up to the cabin. But we weren't going to farm. We were going to homestead. And we were going to sell whatever extra eggs and vegetables we had and try to make a living that way at the at the, the cabin. And so we both quit our jobs, moved up. Uh, we came up with about $30,000 and quickly realized that we were not going to be able to earn any money homesteading at our cabin. We started out very wide. We had chickens, laying hens. We had meat birds, meat chickens, pigs, bees for honey. We were even raising trout in the pond to sell. We were very wide. It was just really, really hard. There was nothing. That first year, there wasn't a lot of moments where you sit back and say, yeah, this is going well. I think I was the most optimistic. It's hard now, but in a few years, we're gonna own the place. We're gonna have greenhouses. We'll have a van that doesn't break down. We'll have some people here who can do some of the weeding and harvesting. I think I believed it. Uh, or I convinced myself it was true. But as you know, we went into the second year and we, we started improving the systems, that year I think we could stand back and say, you know, I can see how it could work. You know, I wish there was like a, an aha moment that we had, but it was a series of really small changes that, you know, when I look at them now, I know that they were the beginnings of what we do today, but they're almost ridiculous as I think about them now. We quickly realized that we needed to narrow things down, narrow our focus. There was nothing efficient about the operation. We would spend 12 to 14 hours a day, every day, working. I mean, it would come out to probably pennies an hour, I think. But, and so, it was that early experience of such hard work with very little return that made us focus on, let's keep this simpler, let's make this efficient, and let's systematize everything. And we more than doubled our profit the second year. And then I think we did three times that by the third year. By the third year, we were just taking off. We had uh, wash station, uh, walk-in, 
bought our first uh, cart, electric cart to drive around. Um, and we had dropped tilling at that point and just went to no-till. To, and it was really just to simplify the process. It wasn't really a political or how would you call it? <laughs> yeah. That it would somehow be better for the soil. Although I think it is, it was really about we need to get from A to B as quick as possible and remove as many steps. And also to be able to have steps that workers can do. It was just a series of small changes from that point till now that created this farm. And it's happening all the time now. Our first season, you know, the weeds were here. You know, we would look for vegetables. And it was that weed pressure that created the weed systems we have now, which is completely eliminating them, like eliminating that problem. And so from that field that we leased, um, what we thought was the most beautiful piece of land, the model for if we were able to someday create another farm, we're still here and we just bought it. 